And if you go and you turn on CNN or BBC or you go pick up The Guardian, pick any Western outlet, they're, they're calling it an invasion. And of course, the Russians are saying, no, it's not an invasion. It's, uh, it's just a limited operation or a special operation. That's what they've been calling it, right? So they're trying to portray it as some sort of little targeted surgical thing. Now, <laughs> I, I agree with Scott. I, I'm going to wait until tomorrow morning till the bullshit clears, because if you if you take your news from mainstream media, well, you know, good luck to you. Uh, I, I'll just remind you one thing. When the U.S. bombed Syria in 2018 over those chemical weapons, uh, no one was calling that an invasion, even though the U.S. has troops in Syria right now. They don't call it an invasion. The U.S. is stealing oil. They don't call it an invasion. They won't even talk about it at all. Um, when it comes to Libya, you know, bombing the crap out of Libya, uh, when it comes to all of these uh, incursions, as they like to call them, you know, they don't talk about an invasion. Look, this is a tweet over here saying very large explosion uh, in progress in Kiev in the capital of Ukraine. So again, I mean, if we're just going to talk, if the Russians are saying it's just the Donbass region, well, what's going on here then? I don't know how well you can see that, but that's quite monstrous. Uh, we got over here CNN. Uh, they were live broadcasting, and then of course the 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 correspondent he puts on his nice flak jacket, acting like a hero. I'll play it for you. Seriously. Take a look. Oh, I tell you what, I just heard a big bang right here behind me. I thought we shouldn't have done the live shot here. There are big explosions taking place in Kiev right now. Um, I can't see where they're taking place from this vantage point here on top of the roof of the hotel in central Kiev. And I can't explain what they are, but I heard four or five explosions a few moments ago. I don't know whether our viewers or whether you in the studio there could hear uh, what, we could what, hear it, what I just heard. You could. Says. So the you know the speech that Putin gave saying that um, announcing this operation. I'm going to play you a short clip of it so you can see what he was saying. Take a look. Authorizations. They used missiles and air force rise in the heart of Europe. Several so weeks. I'm just going to clue you in. He's talking about NATO when they were bombing um, in the 90s. They bombed cities, civilian infrastructure, essential infrastructure. I'd just like to remind our Western car counterparts of, of these facts. They don't want to uh, be reminded. And when we bring it up, they prefer not to rely on, on international law. They just try to uh, cite the circumstances that they could interpret in the way they like. Then came Iraq, Libya, Syria, illegitimate use of power against Libya, the misinterpretation, abuse of the UN Security Council decisions led to the complete collapse of the state and there's a hotbed of international terrorism there. The countries. Yeah, I mean, so what, what Putin is talking about is how NATO has been hypocritical in the past and they've, uh, you know, they've <laughs> done things that they're criticizing Russia for, like bombing the crap out of Libya. I mean, Scott Ritter was on fire. He, he just went through the whole list, right? Iraq, Libya, Syria. So, and I haven't even gotten into the Golan Heights, for example, the U.S. recognizing the Syrian occupied Golan Heights in Syria as Israeli. Like, you know, I'm going to let Putin finish in a moment and I'll continue. Just keep listening to the speech. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but these are the most important parts. Now, plunged into a humanitarian catastrophe and... The multi-year civil war is still ongoing. Hundreds of thousands, millions of people are now in a dangerous situation and we saw massive migration flows from North Africa. The same scenario was prepared for Syria. Military action by the US-led coalition without the authorization of the UN Security Council resolution and the consent of Syrian authorities is... An Take a look here. The Guardian, they, I mean, not just the Guardian, the media have been posting snippets, little quotes of Putin's speech. Let me read you some of these quotes. Uh, tell me what you guys think of this. So... Putin claimed that, quote, a hostile anti-Russia is being created on our historic lands. We have taken, 
We have taken the decision to conduct a special military operation. That's what he called it, a special military operation, right? And, uh, of course, they're, they're calling it a declaration of war. And um, the, 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 the media, that is. Putin claimed it was for the, quote, demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. I mean, uh, you know, this thing aside, <laughs> uh, denazification is always a welcome thing. But let's go back to, let's focus on what they're saying here. They, Putin says, we do not intend to occupy Ukraine, okay? To anyone who would consider interfering from the outside, if you do, you will face consequences greater than any you have faced in history. All relevant decisions have been taken. I hope you hear me. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> you, you know what he's saying. He's telling the West to back off. If you fuck with my operation, I'm going to come after you. And you're, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't even want to speculate what that means. I don't even want to speculate what that means. Here's Joe Biden. Joe Biden says the prayers of the entire world are with the people of Ukraine tonight as they suffer an unprovoked and unjustified attack by Russian military forces. Right. And, uh, uh, Biden is going to give a speech tomorrow, and as Scott said, it's 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 expected that he's going to announce a bunch of sanctions on Russia. I, I, again, I could be wrong, but I don't think that they're going to be as harsh as they say they are because if they do that, they're going to screw Europe. Although it's the U.S., so I mean, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the U.S. just sacrificed Europe like they're sacrificing Ukraine right now, like using that as a pawn. Who knows? But you know, if you if you mess with Russia, removing it from the SWIFT banking system. Russia will just turn off the gas valves to Europe and Europe will freeze. It's that simple. But let me show you the map over here. What Russia was saying is we do not want, for example, French uh, uh, troops or American troops or British troops over here, all the way over here in uh, Estonia, you know, or in Latvia. Obviously, you know, the, these neighboring countries over here, you can't change that they're NATO countries now. Unless, of course, you abolish NATO. But, I mean, Russia can't change that. So Russia was just saying, stop bringing foreign troops into our neighboring countries or surrounding countries. That's, a, that's all they're saying. And, of course, what was the response from the West? The West said, go fuck yourself. So the entire time, the Russians, for 30 fucking years, 30 years, the Russians have been saying, don't expand NATO. And the West, at the beginning, said yes. So it's not just the Russians claiming that, that they want this and, 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 you know, the West has to, like, bend over backwards to accommodate and appease the Russians. No, there was a deal. The Russians agreed with NATO, no more expansion. You don't expand past Germany. That's a fucking fact. I showed you the document the other day. The minutes. The minutes from the meetings when they were doing the 2 plus 4 negotiations. So I, I didn't make that document enough. It was published in Der Spiegel. There are many diplomats who are still alive who were part of those negotiations who have been very clear about this. That they told Russia no more NATO expansion. Scott was just talking about that now. So they had an agreement. Does this look like that uh, they kept their, their word? What are all of these countries doing here? Look, all of these joined in 2004. Poland joined in 99. So did the Czech Republic, right? And now they want Ukraine on top of it. The, the, the West broke its word. We, we, meaning the UK, the US especially, broke our word. And we've been fucking with the Russians. And, and uh, you know, it's like you're prodding a bear. The bear is going to bite you at one point. And, uh, you know, the Ukrainians are the ones feeling the heat now. They've been thrown away like some sacrificial lamb. Again, you see, it's not the U.S. that's paying the price. It's not the na other NATO countries. Ukraine didn't even get to be in fucking NATO, right? They just dangled it in front of it and, and just look who's getting screwed. You know, they, they, they just completely forgot about diplomacy. And they, were kept, they kept saying, well, Vladimir Putin, come to us. We are open to diplomacy. Stop your, your, your malign actions. Come and speak with us. We're open to diplomacy. And every time Russia would say, stop the NATO expansion, stop circle, encircling us with, NATO, with hostile bases, don't let Ukraine join. Do you know what NATO said? They use this exact word. They say non-starter. Non-starter. So go fuck yourself. That's, it's a nice way of saying go fuck yourself. Non-starter. We're not even talking about that. It's, it's completely out of the question. Right? Because NATO has an open door policy, they would claim. Here's just the first random thing. The United States says that Russia's demands on NATO and Ukraine are a non-starter. If, if a country in South America joined an alliance with Russia, the United States would fucking bomb it. The United States would bomb it anyway. They've done a coup in literally every Latin American country there is and every Central American country there is without any alliance with Russia. And when the Cubans, the Cubans didn't even enter a, a, a formal military alliance 
with, or, or defensive partnership with Russia. They only put missiles there after the U.S. tried to overthrow their government. They're well within their rights. I mean, you, you try to overthrow someone's government and then you wonder why they have nuclear missiles now pointing at you. I mean, maybe you shouldn't try to overthrow their fucking government. And so my point is the Cuban Missile Crisis, you really, you can't remove that and, and talk about what's happening today and not think about that and, and contextualize it because the Cuban Missile Crisis is a perfect, perfect example of, of what the U.S. response is to being encircled and even having a minor threat. You know, wh why, why do we say the Cuban Missile Crisis is important before any of this stuff happened in Ukraine, right? We talk about it to this day because a nuclear fucking war was almost started. Not a little incursion or invasion of Ukraine. A nuclear fucking war almost started because of the United States feeling threatened by the Soviets. But it's okay for the U.S. to threaten the Russians uh, with this expansion, to break their word, to make sure Ukraine doesn't abide by the Minsk agreements. You can't fucking remove that from context. This is outrageous. Look at the fucking map. Just look at the map. This is a fact. The West broke its word. It's been threatening Russia ever since. And this whole crisis today could have been avoided. If you are coming to me and you're saying Putin is insane, Putin is evil, Putin is the devil himself. Why the fuck then are you giving him all the ammunition and the arguments that he needs to go into Ukraine? Why did you hand him this ammunition? Why didn't you say, okay, we're not going to take in NATO. Okay, we're not going to put NATO troops on your border because we understand that you have security concerns and we're going to respect you. Why didn't you tell Ukraine to abide by the Minsk agreements? Why did you give Putin everything he wanted if you're really so sure that he's just a greedy fucking psychopath and Russia is not a, a country with valid security concerns? This whole thing could have been avoided. And I, I am so, so, so distraught and sick of these fucking two-faced motherfuckers who, who say nothing about Syria and Libya just a few hours ago, right now, right now, Israel bombed Syria. Do you think any of these fuckers on CNN did a segment? You think they talked about that on CNN? Not a word, not a word. Do you think Liz Truss, the UK foreign secretary, made a statement condemning Israel for bombing Syria? Not a word. Not one mainstream channel talked about that. You know why? Because they're fucking hypocrites. I just asked you, a UN weapons inspector a few moments ago, what he thinks about NATO. It should be abolished. It serves no purpose. It serves absolutely no purpose. It's an antagonistic, uh, 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 warmongering organization. That's all it, all it does. You have no argument for NATO. NATO does not protect the world from the Soviet Union. It doesn't exist. And this crisis in Ukraine is very heartbreaking. It's, it's very, very disappointing and... and, and, and and mess up. This should not be happening. You know, if, again, if you're going to claim that Putin is some, some nutcase and, and he's uh, an evil dictator and all the bullshit you want to call him, why would you give him ammunition? Why would you let him have uh, uh, the, the, the moral high ground and, and, and to try and justify this invasion then? Why would you give that to him? If you are so sure and so adamant about avoiding conflict, if you really, really believe in diplomacy, we wouldn't be here today.